the good, the bad, and the ugly of building a new construction home. And if that's the information you're looking for, well, we're getting started right now. Hi and welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is John Farron. I'm a realtor with HomeSmart Lifestyles right here in Queen Creek, Arizona. And on this channel, we talk about all things real estate as it pertains to Queen Creek and the surrounding area. So in today's video, I wanna take a few minutes and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of building a new construction home. We're gonna start out with the bad, we'll move to the ugly, and then we'll finish up with the good. So you wanna make sure you stick around. All right, here's the bad or the disadvantages to building a home. Now the first thing to know is that building a home is an imperfect process and so there's going to be mistakes made along the way. And maybe I've been accused of defending the builder when there's been a little bit of sloppy workmanship, but the truth is regardless of the price point, you're working with natural products and there's the human factor and we're all imperfect beings. Think about going to dinner in a classy restaurant, okay? And you order the most expensive thing off the menu. Now, you anticipate there's gonna be a waiting period of time while your food's being prepared. And then, you expect a very nice finished product, in this case a meal, to be delivered to your table. And nearly every time, that is exactly what happens. But what you didn't see is what was taking place in the kitchen while your meal was being made. Had you gone back into the kitchen, you would have seen the sausage, so to speak, being made, and you would have seen things being spilled, broken, knocked over, uh, taste tested, retested, remade, thrown out, and it would have looked like just a whole bunch of chaos to you. But at the appointed time, a beautifully plated meal that's been cooked to perfection is gonna be delivered to your table. And so it goes with the home building process too. You know, occasionally that client comes along that feels like they need to be in the kitchen, so to speak, and they feel like they have to babysit the house and maybe tell the builder how to do their job. They might even feel that the builder is doing things wrong and mistakes are going to be made, but there's processes put in place with various inspections and walkthroughs that those mistakes should be caught and just kind of organically through the process, they'll all be worked out. Just like that meal that's being prepared back in the kitchen for you, you just gotta trust the process. Now having said all that, I'm not saying you should ignore everything. I think you need to stay on top of what's going on, but just recognize that there is a process in place and that at the end of the day, a final finished product will be delivered to you. Now another thing to remember is that throughout the build process, the house is not yours. Wait, what? Yeah, so I get it. During the build process, you're excited, you wanna, you wanna stop by it several times a week to check in on the progress, and it's very easy to take on some sort of sense of ownership. I mean, heck, I've done it myself in the last two homes that I've built. But until the house is completed, and all the paperwork has been signed, and the loan has funded, and the deed has been recorded with the county, it still belongs to the builder. In fact, there's one construction manager that I work with who always likes to tell his buyers that it's his house until it becomes their home. All right, so what else is on the bad list? How about pricing? So it's important that you understand that the price you see on the price sheet or maybe on the website, that's the basic plain Jane, no upgrade, basic floor plan pricing for that model. And I don't know anybody who buys the basic plain Jane, no upgrade floor plan. Most buyers do actually add upgrades to their homes, and the first place that that usually begins is with the floor plan. So most floor plans, they're flexible, and you can add a room or make a den, do a bump out, etc. And those decisions will actually need to be made at the time that you sign your contract. And of course, any structural change that is made is gonna have a price associated with it. And then there are lot premiums that are attached to the lots that might be a little bit more desirable because they're larger or the view's better or maybe they're closer to the amenities. And so at the time that you're signing your contract, you know the base price of the home, you've just made all of your structural upgrades so you know that dollar amount and you know the lot premium. 
So when you add those three together, well, you still haven't determined the final sales price of the home. And why is that? Well, you still need to make your design center appointment. At the design center, this is where you have the opportunity to pick out other upgrades. Most people like to update their floorings, their kitchens, and their countertops, and you'll have the opportunity to do that. There's other things that you can update as well as far as light fixtures and fans. You can add low voltage items and really the list goes on and on. Now be careful not to go overboard. I mean you don't have to upgrade anything but typically most buyers spend about an average of 12 to 15 percent of the base price of the home on their upgrades. So pro tip number one is make sure you calculate that into your budget. So then if you take what you spent at the design center and you add that dollar amount to what your subtotal was from your original contract signing and you put those two together, now you've got the final sales price of your home. Here's the good news, however. You're locked into the price at the time you sign your contract. So throughout the next nine, 10, whatever it is, months of building, as the builder adds price increases to the base prices of their homes, your price hasn't changed, so now you're really just building equity long before you even move into your house. Now I know I kind of went off into a tangent into the good territory, but it had to do with pricing, so we just ran with it. Anyway, you take the things that we've talked about thus far, and then to add to your stress, many of you are going to second guess the selections that you made. Now you're going to have some regrets, I guess is the word, because you're going to realize that maybe you should have added an outlet here or a switch over there or maybe an extra hose bib in the backyard or maybe you should have changed the uh, interior door hardware from the chrome to the matte black that you really liked. We all go through that. I've experienced it myself. And that leads us into the next item on the bad list and that is that the builder is not going to be flexible. And what I mean by that is once the structural upgrades have been determined and the um, design center selections have been decided, there's no going back, there's no turning back from those in, in most cases. And any changes that you can make, there's always going to be a fee associated with that change, somewhere between $250 and $500 per change. Now the reason for that is because permits have already been uh, obtained from the city, materials and supplies, all of this has already been purchased far in advance. So it's really, really difficult to go in and make changes at this point. So then how do you deal with the bad? Well, you deal with it through patience. And right now, patience is probably the most important ingredient to this entire equation. With a resale home, the normal time between contract to close is 30 to 45 days but not so much with a builder. With new home construction, it can easily take eight to 12 months or even longer. In fact, I have one client that we're now at 12 months into his build process and he anticipated it only being a nine month process. So we're three months later than what we first anticipated and to make matters worse, we still got two more months to go for the home to be completed. How? Crazy and aggravating might that be. All right, so that was the bad, and now we're gonna delve into the ugly. And I don't mean to discourage you, but I want you going into this with your eyes wide open so that you're prepared for the roadblocks and speed humps that might lay ahead. And the very first one starts with the builder's contract. So in the resale market, the purchase contract is 11 pages long, and it's written slanted in the buyer's favor. There's a lot of protections built into the contract for the buyer. Ah, but not so with the builder's contract. A builder's contract is written in a manner that it protects the builder and offers the buyer actually very little protection. Those things can be 60, 70, or even more pages long, and they're all written, again, to protect the builder. For example, in the resale market, when you make your earnest deposit, where does it go? It goes to a third party escrow company and they hold that money in escrow throughout the purchase process. Well, with a builder, when you put down your earnest deposit, it doesn't go into escrow. It goes right into the builder's pocket. And unlike the resale market, your earnest deposit that you've put down, those thousands of dollars, are non-refundable, except for in the most extreme cases. And kind of along those lines, I haven't seen it here, but I have heard stories from across the country where builders are just simply canceling the contract right now because they can't fulfill their orders due to labor shortages 
and exorbitant uh, material costs. Now in those cases you would hope that the builder is returning those earnest deposits and I think they probably are but that's not necessarily so. Now here locally we haven't quite seen that but here is what we have seen. Builders are offering to their buyers the opportunity to back out of the contract and receive their earnest deposit back if they choose. Now they're doing this because there have been so many delays and setbacks due to material shortages and increased costs. And this is a win-win for both the buyer and the builder. For the frustrated buyer who's just given up and they just want to be done and get their money back, they have the opportunity now, which normally they don't. And for the builder, they now have a mostly or semi-completed home that they can turn around and sell as a spec home for a considerably higher amount than what it originally sold for maybe six months ago. Now, is that the right way to do things? I don't know. You know, if the buyer's happy and the builder's happy, I guess so. Have we talked about the stress involved in this process? Well, let's do that now because the stress involved in building a house is sometimes more than just anybody can handle. Building a house can really create relationship tension even if you have the greatest marriage and you're working with the best home builder. But thankfully, there are some things that you can do to help minimize that stress and strain on your relationship during the build process. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but there are three that I think are worth mentioning. The first is simply accepting that you're not always going to agree, and that's okay. Number two is keep your sense of humor. Things are gonna come up, things are gonna happen, and you really have a choice here. You can laugh about it or you can cry about it. And for me, crying gives me a headache, so let's go with laughter. And lastly is when you do lose your cool, and that may well happen, be sure that you apologize to your spouse or partner. That apology can go a long way towards reducing the stress. And now you might think that I'm being maybe a little over dramatic, but moving comes in at number three on the top five list of life stressors. So I think that's something worth looking at. Now here's another pro tip, and this is some sage advice. Guys, come here, I'm talking to you. Just step out of the way and let her build the house the way she wants. Yes, of course, you should get the things that are really important to you as well, whether that's your man cave, a theater room, a large garage, whatever it is. I'm not saying you just roll over and play dead. But when it comes to materials and flooring and cabinets, I mean, really, do you really care? Let me share an example of that with you. I'm working with some out-of-state clients who are building here, and for anonymity's sake, let's just call them Steve and Susie. So Steve, pretty hands-off throughout the whole process, and when it came time for their design center appointment, they came into town, and when Susie went to the design center, Steve, went to the shooting range. Now you might chuckle at that, and it is kind of funny, but Steve learned a long time ago that going with Susie's flow makes them both happy. All right, enough doom and gloom. Are you ready for the good things? Let's talk about the good things or the advantages of building a new build home. The first thing is pretty obvious, I think, and that is everything's brand new. So that means there's no repairing or replacing. Everything is new and functioning and you don't have to worry about fixing anything. And when building a new home, you'll be moving into a brand new neighborhood. So not only do you get a brand new house, but you live in a brand new location with brand new people who are also brand new to the area. And because nobody really knows anybody, it's that much easier for you all to make friends with each other. And new homes come with a full bumper to bumper warranty. So even if something were to be installed wrong or it breaks or whatever, it's gonna be covered by the home warranty and it'll be replaced or repaired with no out of pocket expenses to you. And the way they're building homes these days compared to in the past, oh my gosh, the quality of building and building materials is greatly increased. Your new home will be built to a much higher standard and it'll meet the latest building codes and home building practices. And today's homes, man, they are extremely energy efficient. In addition to you know the standard insulation in the attic and the walls, new homes today are sealed tighter and have higher energy standards that they have to meet. You'll have water and energy saving appliances and fixtures 
and you'll also get a better home design. Not only are new homes more functional, they're often loaded with the newest and most popular products and they're built to the current trends. Today's homes, many of them are coming as a fully functional smart home with the latest and greatest technology. Don't believe me? Well, let's ask Alexa. Hey Alexa, do new homes have great technology? Here's something I found on the web. According to CertMag.com, structured wiring in new home builds is drastically speeding the adoption of home technology and wireless internet access has helped alleviate previously held limits in existing homes. She would know, wouldn't she? Well, another benefit of building a new construction home over a resale home is that you get to select your home site. This can range from the size of the lot to the direction the home will face, or maybe you prefer a corner lot or a cul-de-sac or maybe lots with views. Now this is becoming a little bit more difficult these days with the way builders are releasing lots, but you do still have some options available to you. And it used to be that neighborhoods were built with maybe a tot lot here and there and maybe some walking paths, but not today. Today the end thing is to do a full on master plan community. These are large scale residential neighborhoods and they have a whole bunch of recreational amenities, things like golf courses, tennis and pickleball courts. You'll find lakes, parks, playgrounds, swimming pools, and really the list could go on and on. But the best part of building a new home is that you get to select virtually everything about it, including a floor plan that meets your needs and wants. You can choose a plan that includes a home office or a gym. Maybe you need a mother-in-law suite or a detached casita. Maybe it's a four car garage that you're looking for. And in addition to those types of decisions, you have the ability to select your flooring and cabinets, the countertops, what appliances you're gonna put in the kitchen, paint, colors, lighting, plumbing fixtures, and on and on. And so there you have the good, the bad, and the ugly of building a new home. And I'm sure there's more stuff I could have added to the list, but I think this will do for now. Now I know this has gotten a little bit long, so if you're still with me, thank you for hanging in there. You know, building a house is exciting and it's rewarding, but you need to be prepared for some of the bumps and bruises that are gonna come along the way, but really nothing beats the excitement and the joy of moving into that brand new home. So if you're watching right now and you think that you might be interested in moving to the Queen Creek area or really anywhere in the Phoenix Metro area, and you think that you and I might make a good fit, well then I invite you to call, text, email me, even a singing telegram will work because when it comes to buying and selling homes in the Southeast Valley, well, I've got your back. All right, I hope you found this information useful. Feel free to search around the channel and see what else jumps out at you. While you're there, remember to hit that subscribe button, click on the bell so you'll be notified each time a new video gets uploaded, and while you're at it, you may as well follow me on social media right here. Now, while you're busy doing all of that, I'm going to be right here looking forward to seeing you in the next video.